I know that you're afraid of cut molds. I know it because I hear it in the comments down below. I hear it in my email box and on Facebook. And people contact me all the time and say, how do I do this? And what am I doing? I don't want to do this. And I get it. I understand why you're afraid. So I want to use this little fisherman sculpture here to illustrate why people are afraid of cut molds, the specific areas of concern and uh, what seems really difficult and really daunting and really intimidating actually isn't. You can figure it out. And in this video, I'll show you how. So let's get going. All right, let's take a look at this boy. Oh no, look, <laughs> caught a wicked bubble right in the worst possible place in the eye. I bet the sculptor about jumped out the window when they saw that. Let's start with the base because that's arguably the simplest part of the job, but it does have its complexities. And one of those complexities is right here. So many of the questions that I get about cut molds involve holes. And the handle of this basket forms a perfect hole. And people say, how do you deal with holes in a cut mold? And it's actually really simple. I'm going to use this donut as our model because it has a hole and because it's a simple object. So here's our donut and here I've encased it in a block of rubber. You can see that the hole in the donut becomes a bridge of rubber that connects the two halves of the mold. So you cut down the outside of the donut making the parting line. And this is where people get hung up. They say, I don't want to cut the model to cut the hole. How do I cut the hole without destroying my model? And the answer is really pretty simple you stretch the two halves of the mold apart and that stretches and elongates the bridge of rubber between the two halves and when you pull it apart that far you, it cuts very easily and then the two halves snap back together and you will find that you've cut the hole pretty much in the middle. All right enough with the donut. Let's figure out the cut line on this base and I'm thinking it's going to start right about here. From the bottom out the point the tip of that point and then up to the basket cross over the handle of the basket and see how I'm cutting the, uh, through the handle of the basket then down the other side straight out along the ridge and out the prominent part of that piece but before we cut the bottom we've got to deal with the fact that the base is hollow as you can see and uh, see all that white stuff that's in there that's leftover investment that's like plaster of paris and that's how you know this was an investment casting and not a sand casting but we also want to make this base hollow in order to do that however we're going to use a roto casting method totally different than the investment casting method so one of the first things we're going to have to do is cap off the base solid like this and once we do that we can we can see where the parting line goes on the bottom the next thing we need to do is pull the figure off the base and it's just held on by screws. I'm assuming that if this uh, job was handed to you by a sculptor or if you sculpted it yourself, you would have been smart enough and known enough <laughs> to make sure you didn't attach the sculpture to the base because it's usually easier to cast figures uh, when they're not attached to a base. And we're ready to put the uh, rubber mold on. First thing I'm going to do is put a little sprue pour funnel at the bottom and attach that because we want to form that into the rubber mold. We'll build the rubber blanket up in layers. That's probably about the right thickness for rubber. You don't want the rubber to be floppy like an empty balloon, but at the same time you don't want it to be too thick or you just wind up wasting rubber. So once we have the rubber mold to our satisfaction, it's time to put the shell on. And then let's get a look at it from the top view. And this is why we put all that effort into determining where the parting line was going to go. So here you can see we planned out the parting line and uh, I'm, I'm going to follow that parting line uh, where I plan to cut the rubber. In fact, that line you see there would be very similar to the line you'd make if you clayed it up. And the important takeaway point here is that the parting line for the shell isn't going to be even. It's going to wander all over the place. And then the final step is to put the other half of the mold shell on like that. Going back to the problem of the holes, we can see that the arms of this sculpture form two holes. If someone had brought me this bronze sculpture to make a mold of, there's no way that I could cut through the sculpture. To, to cut the rubber bridges, you stretch the rubber away from the figure, and you can easily cut out the bridges under the arms. I think the biggest reason that people are afraid to cut molds is because of the anxiety. Like, for instance, if I brought rubber around this statue, this is the size of the mold. Look at the size of this thing. It's huge and it's expensive. There's a lot of money tied up in this mold. And uh, 
It's very intimidating to look at a big block of rubber like this. By the way, this is not a real block of rubber. It's a roll of paper. But it's the exact size and shape of that of the cylinder of rubber that would enclose this sculpture. So you can see it's a big block of rubber, and that's a lot of money and time tied up into it. And I get it. You look at a mold like this, and, and you've got to find the sculpture inside of it and, and cut down to it. And it's, it's no wonder it's intimidating. So the way, do you, the way you approach it, the way you start is in the planning stages. When you make the sculpture, you use your phone and you take lots of pictures, similar to what you see me doing in these videos where I have pictures and I draw the parting lines, I do all that stuff. You can do the exact same thing. So you plan out and have a really clear idea of where your cuts are gonna be before you start. Cutting a mold isn't very much different than claying up a mold in the sense that as you cut the mold, you carefully kind of find your way down through it. We start at the sprue, which is sticking out, so you can find that, and you cut your way down, and that helps you find the landmarks to make the next cuts, especially when you've already planned out where they're gonna be and how they're gonna be. So you can definitely do it. You just have to go slow. It's just like when you clay up a mold, you know, you build it up slowly and you go around and you do same exact thing with cutting. You just go slow. The worst thing you can do in a cut mold is cut the mold apart so that it's no longer a one piece mold. That's now a multi piece mold. Then you've lost the advantage of a one piece mold, which naturally just closes itself up. But also if you cut chunks out of the mold, if you, if you're that, clumsy about it, you are going to have problems because you're never going to get those little chunkies to, to go to assemble themselves again. So you want to put, you can have an amazing number of cuts in the mold. The cuts don't have to relate to one another. In other words, in a, in a clay up mold, you know, you have this flat cut parting, you have this flat parting plane that goes all the way around the model and it's all interconnected and it's all hooked together in one undulating surface of clay. But cut molds aren't like that. A cut mold, you can have a cut over here, and you can have a cut that releases over here, and you have a cut. You can have a series of completely unrelated cuts, and all you have to be able to do is pull the mold open and release the model, and then it pops out. And so the parting line is short, the cuts are invisible, and the model comes out beautifully. One thing to think about when you're cutting a mold is uh, the angle that you cut into the surface with. The black lines shown here are surface normals. That is to say they, enter, they come into the surface at about 90 degrees, and that means they have about you know, 90 degrees on either side of the line. The real definition of a normal is that it, it, it intersects the circumference of the circle and goes to the center. And um, that's how you want to come in to any surface. You want to be as close to normal or as close to perpendicular to the surface as you can be. Um, so let's take a look at a surface. The black lines, as you can see, are pretty close to normal to the surface. These are all just fine. That's how you want to cut. They don't have to be perfect, but they have to be pretty close. Even these lines down here, which are more at an angle, the blue ones, they're still acceptable because they still have enough meat on either side of the cut that the two cuts, the two halves of the cut support themselves. So that works out really well. These lines, on the other hand, are not acceptable. They're just, they're just coming in at too sharp an angle. This just doesn't work out. And the reason for that, again, is that you get these really sharp points of rubber everywhere. And there just isn't enough support behind this. So this, this surface and chunk of rubber has a lot of support, but in here, this doesn't. And so these cuts would tend to open up. They would tend to flap and deform and cause all kinds of little surface problems in your model. So you don't want to come in at weird angles when you approach the surface with your cuts. Okay, so let's apply what we've learned to our model. So here's our guy and here's his feet. So how we, how we want to cut this guy is like this. Now this line coming in, as you can see, it's not normal to the surface, but it's good enough. It crosses, where it leaves it's just fine. There's plenty of support on either side of that cut. But if I had come down here and continued this line, I would have hit down here. That's not good. So instead I came down and I turned the line. I turned into the surface. And I do this regularly when I'm cutting molds. I come and I turn in to make sure that I come in at a nice normal angle to the surface. And on the other side, it's just fine. So this is an, a perfectly acceptable cut scheme.
These cuts, on the other hand, are not acceptable. These cuts are almost tangent to the surface and are making really sharp points. This cut line needed to be down here, not way up here. These missed. You don't want these. The outer ones are okay, but these are absolutely no good. And these points of rubber would be too weak. So when you go to cut a model, think about you know, the angles that you're coming into uh, as much as you can. And then you'll have a much better chance of making a mold that will close up properly and be magnifico. And I think the final reason, well, at least final for this video, <laughs> that people are intimidated by cut molds is that their model is too complicated. A uh, great example on this model is this hat. It may have been cast as part of the model with an investment casting. It's a different process, but for resin casting and the way we're doing it using gravity and vents, there's no way that I could guarantee that I could reliably fill the brim of that hat uh, while casting it attached to the head. So what we're going to do is take it off, remove it and cast it as a separate piece. And when you take the and when you take the hat off, you get a natural place to attach the pore spout, and that's going to be a big pore spout. So this model will fill up very easily, and you just won't have any problems with it. And then the hat by itself is simple to set up. The trick to the hat is making the pore spout fit the rim, so it's not a round pore spout; it's a shaped pore spout. You've seen me do that in other videos. Uh, make this uh, pore spout fit the rim of the hat, and then all you need is a single vent out the top, and you're good to go. And that's pretty much how I would set this model up for casting. Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next. And keep your comments coming, keep your questions coming. You know I love hearing from you. And when I do get back to my studio, I'll be pouring resin and pouring rubber and making the usual mayhem. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.